Okay, last class we kind of started off learning about sizes, right? And so remember we had a thousand by thousand at 300 dpi. Do you remember that? And then we cropped a photo that was smaller and then we duplicated it across. Well, you know, a lot of times you're going to be faced with a camera, a picture that's raw right out of the camera. So how do I know what size that is and so on? So we're going to learn to analyze pictures and color correct them as well. So to do that, I'm going to open the pictures that I had on... Um, had on um, that file that we downloaded. If I can find that, it probably went over here to downloads. Here it is right there. It's It should be a folder. If you don't see it, if you download on these computers, there's probably a download folder, and it's, it's down here next to the trash can. So if you look at the trash can, you'll see this thing called downloads right here. So whenever you download something, it usually pops up there. And since I uncompressed it, it was a zip file. And if you didn't uncompress it, if you just double click on it, it will uncompress it and make a folder. And you can just drag that folder from here out on your desktop so you can see it. First thing I'm going to do is double click on it to open it up and you'll see most of these are raw. How do we know they're raw straight from the camera? Well, it has the crazy numbers that you see from a camera when you take it. These are done with a DSLR. You can go to the library and check out a camera too if you don't have one. You should learn how to use it. What is a DSLR? Digital, what do I want to make that? DSLR. Single lens reflex. Digital single lens. So um, it's basically the camera has a mirror in it, and so that's called that. So uh, they're straight from the camera. They're JPEGs. We didn't really learn last class. We saw how to save a JPEG, but in the next couple of weeks, we should learn the difference between a PNG. Right there, you see this one says PNG there, and the other one says JPEG. Usually, when you take a screen grab, right? You talked about the screen grab, the Command Shift Four for the the Mac or on the there. It's usually in the PNG format. And uh, what is the difference between JPEG and PNG? Well, they developed the PNG around 2000, I would say. Yeah, right around 2000, to be an open source format. Because one of the problems with companies is they tend to want license. Right? They, you, if you want to use my, my format, you have to pay me. Like GIF is owned by CompuServe, it's GIF, the GIF format. And so CompuServe makes money off of licensing the GIF. And there was a company that claimed they owned JPEG back in 1997. 1997 was when, and that company was Intel. Intel was claiming that they owned JPEG. They went to court and it was thrown out. They couldn't prove that they owned the patent for JPEG. But with those in mind, a lot of open source things are being developed like the PNG to be able to do things. The first one I'm going to open up is the first one right here. An easy way to open up an image in Photoshop if you have it on your desktop is to right click on it. If you use the right mouse click and say open with, you can say open with and it'll tell you all the different all the different programs you can open it with. And of course, you have preview which is the photo one on, on the Mac. You have fireworks which is a very old kind of software program we used to use back in the 290s. Illustrator and then Photoshop of course and so if I just click on Photoshop it should automatically open it up in Photoshop so again the first one that's in the list is a very dark ugly uh, photo and we're gonna make it better and you're gonna be faced with dark ugly photos and take them I'm sure it's raw most of the take them too raw so can't always so the first thing you're gonna get Did you download this these files? Just click on this. Click. Click. Oh, you have yeah, open that. Open it, open it, open it. And then right click, open with Photoshop. Click. Okay, so the first thing I want you to see is we didn't really get to talk about layers. If you don't see layers up, um, you can bring up layers by going under Window, Layers. Layers is a very common thing that we use pretty much all the time. We're going to have multiple layers. We're going to make folders in the layers. We're going to duplicate layers. 
If you look at any of the interfaces that we have on the screen, or up here even, if you look at this example from previous class, you'll see you'll have photos, you'll have text. You have, remember we made a shape at the top last class, right? And so each one of these objects you see on this piece of paper is going to be in a different layer. So you're going to have to get used to dealing with the layers and how you use them. Uh, we, we make folders in there, like you would make folders on your desktop, and you, you can duplicate, you can name them. Right now it says background. You see that? And there's a little lock right there. It, that's okay for right now for this kind of picture, but in, in, in a lot of the other ones, I get rid of the background and I make it a normal layer. To get rid of the background and not make it a background layer, but make it a normal layer, you just double click on the layer. So if I come over here and I double click right here, Right here on the word background, if you double click on that, it's going to say, hey, do you want to make it a normal layer? I'm going to say, okay. I usually do that. Why? Because if I was trying to get the background out, like you saw before, where there was a product with a white background, if you leave it a background layer and then try and put white back there, it wouldn't let you do it because it was locked and it was something. So I tend to do that. For right now, that, that wasn't that important in this example. First thing I'm going to do is look at what size this image is. To get to the size, we go underneath image, image size. This is a very common way of looking at what are the pixels, what is the width, and what is the height. So again, it's under image, image size. If you click on that, you'll see it'll tell you how big it is. You'll see it's 50 by 76 inches at 72 dpi. Here's the pixel dimensions 3,684 by 5,472. It tells you how big it is. It's 57 megabytes. Whoosh. Okay, so this is straight from the camera. That's why the resolution is, is why it's so big. Okay. To fix the picture, then you could just close that. I just wanted to show you that I use that to analyze what we're starting with. And I'll change that somewhere. I would never put something that big on a website, right? Look at the zoom factor at the very top. Remember we talked about zoom factor? 8%. If you wanted to see what it would look like on a website, if you command plus, right, all the way up to 100. Remember command plus? That's 100%. That's the size. It would take up the whole entire web page, right? So again, the zoom factor is command plus, zooms in, command minus, zooms out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. You should practice that. Again, it's command plus, command minus, because you're going to be zooming. And then the other thing is when you're zoomed in, we're going to use the finger or the hand. Watch this. I zoom in, command plus, 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 plus. And let's say I'm working on this. I'm putting something on his t-shirt or something like that. If you hold down the space bar, the cursor turns into a hand, and then you can drag with the mouse. See that? Again, space bar with the left hand and mouse. And when you're zoomed in, you can then move things around. Like that. Try that. Again, I'm holding the space bar down with my left hand, and I'm using my mouse, my the left mouse, holding the left mouse down and dragging around. Try that. I do that every day, multiple times a day. I'm always dragging. So I zoom in. And again, it's the same size. So you can see how to move things around. OK. Are you OK? You got it? OK. OK, let's lighten it. So he's awful dark. And this, this guy's in Utah, so we can use his picture. He's not here anymore. He moved to Utah. So to lighten him up, probably the most the one I use the most is called Levels. To get to Levels, we go underneath Image, Adjustment, Levels, Image Adjustment Levels. And then this is a graph of the, this graph right here is called the histogram, technical term. Basically what you're looking at is the values from dark to light. You can see there's not a lot of white in there. This would be white here. There's a lot of kind of middle gray, but there's a lot of dark, dark, dark colors. Okay, so how do we use this? Um, and I use this on every photo I take the levels. Easiest way is you'll see that I don't mess with the down here, the output levels. Don't mess with that. I just mess with the ones in the middle here. 
So this is middle gray right here. So if you take the triangle that's in the middle and you go to the left, you're telling the middle gray to be brighter, basically. If you take the white one, which is this one, the one on the very end, and tell that to be brighter, you can see it's really brightening it. Now this is a very bad photo, so it's never going to be beautiful. But this is how I, I use levels on pretty much every photo I take. And black, you can bring black in. And so something like this might be a good starting point. Again, you can zoom out to see what it looks like. Command minus. There's a preview button that says before and after. See that? Before and after. Before and after. Another way to do it, I'm going to kind of put everything back to default where it was. It was kind of in the middle here and this was there. Another really useful option in levels is it needs to do a little color correcting as well. Because right now if I just move these little triangles, it's not really adjusting any of the colors because it's adjusting RGB all together, red, green, and blue. You can see them right here. But let's say you took a photo and it was a little warm, you know, because your camera, your camera has settings where it'll shoot warm or it'll shoot cold depending on the light, the color of the light. If you use one of these eyedroppers, it'll adjust the, the brightness, but it'll also do some color correcting. So I usually use this one right here, the one on the end, this eyedropper, and that is where I'm going to tell it which one I want to be white. This is the white one. This is, hey, make it white. So here we go. If I click on this one that's on the end here, this eyedropper right here, and I go and I'm going to say, okay, I want this next to his face, this area right here, to be the pure white. If I click there, it'll make it pure white. Notice how it made some adjustments, but it's a little bit different adjustments. Look at the, the way there is, and you see the colors have shifted a little bit as well. But then I can brighten it as well. And so by using the eyedropper, it not only adjusted the um, grays and, and as well, but it also did some color adjustments. Again, if you hit the preview, you can say before and after. Okay, everybody cool with that one? The other one that I showed in, in the handout was another one called Curves. So if you go under Image again, remember this. So I just hit, hit OK with that. Another one is, is I want to get some of the orange out of there. There's too much orange in this picture. Everything looks kind of orange. And so one way to adjust and get rid of color is to adjust the curves. And so if I go under Image Adjustment, there's one under Levels called Curves. Curves is very useful. And it shows you a histogram as well. In fact, let me tell you the story in that, in that um, you know, one of the first computers that I used that was able to do pixel space like this um, it was a Windows computer, um, and the program was called a Targa, the board, the video card inside the computer was a Targa board, and um, the only way to adjust the, the image was curve. There was no levels or anything. This is before Photoshop. So before Photoshop, I was using Curves. Curves has been around for a while. To get rid of some of the red or get rid of orange, I'm going to see where it says Channel up here. You see you have your RGB values. I could go to the red curve. So up here where it says Channels, you see where it says red? And I can then remove some of the red. You can see you can adjust the red if you want more red. You just click along the line that's here, and you can do more. You could do less. You can put points along the red here and do something like this where you have a kind of an S curve. If you don't want a point and you said, oh, I put way too many points in there, and you go like this, and, whoa, that's getting crazy, oh, my. You can just hit delete, and it'll delete a point. So you just select it and hit delete on the keyboard, and it'll go away. So try the curves there. Again, this has been the curves has been around for, whew, I started using curves, like I said, in probably 1990. 1990, I was using curves. And you can see some of my art from back then. I actually was selling art in art galleries just using curves. I would take a photo, scan it in the computer, adjust the colors and curves, print it out, and put it on the wall, and people would buy it. I sold half my pieces in my first gallery opening. So try that, practice those curves and levels. So last thing I'm going to do is, so I'm going to hit OK. 
you can practice at. Take your time. One of the things you look at on this photo is it's kind of a nice photo, but what is the problem? Well, you have this heating vent right above his head. Look at that. It's pretty ugly. And he's kind of standing in the doorway. He's got this chair here. Don't forget a crop. Remember the crop tool? Now, when you do the crop tool, you don't have to put in numbers. I know last class we put in numbers, right? So here we go. I'm going to use the crop tool again, but without putting in the values. So if you remember, the crop tool is the third one down on the left side of the toolbar here. So if you count down one, two, three, you'll see crop right here. I'm going to click on it. Now it still has the 250 by 250 at 300 we used last class, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the word clear right here, clear, boom, and it clears out all the settings. Once I hit clear here, again, I'm using the crop tool, uh, this one, and then I hit clear. Now I can draw the box. I'm going to kind of draw a box around him, kind of getting rid of some of the chair. I want his feet, though, because that's part of the skateboard is to be on your feet. But at least I could crop out where the horrible vent is above his head. So again, to use the crop tool, I cleared it, and then I can move my stuff around here, and that looks a little bit better. Getting rid of some of it. And then I'm going to hit the move tool. When you're done with the crop tool, just click the move tool right here, and it'll ask you, do you want to crop it? And you say, yeah, crop. Boom. That looks a lot better. Still not a great photo, but composition-wise better and so on. So here's the problem again though. It's still a really big file problem. To put this on a website is really going to be is again you look at the eight percent at the top of the zoom factor. So this to put this on a website would be way too big. Now one of the things you can get away with in the future now is WordPress. If you put in a picture in WordPress it'll recompress it into different versions in WordPress. So you can kind of get away with somewhat. Still you want to make it smaller. So to make it smaller, I'm going to go underneath the image image size. Do you remember that option that we looked at first? Image image size. So if we go under image, image size, you'll see whoosh, you got inches here. I don't use inches. Look, it's still 37.5 megabytes. Wow, can you try downloading that on your cell phone? It'd be big. Okay, so we need to adjust the size. Again, it's under image, image size. I'm going to change this from inches to pixels, the, the measurement here, pixels. And so let's think about it. Standard computer monitor might be, you know, 2,400 pixels across by 1,200 pixels high, something like that. You know, so you want to put, put it on the screen, maybe about that size. I'm just guessing, I'm just estimating here. So maybe if I want this to be maybe 500 pixels across by, you know, 700 pixels high. So how can I do that? Something like that. Of course, I would use a crop tool if I wanted exactly like that. But when you adjust one, it'll automatically adjust the other because it's a ratio. So inside here, let's just say I want the width to be... What did I write up there? 700? What did I write? <laughs> 500. 500. So I can come over here to where it says width and I can type in 500. There we go. That's going to be much better. 849, that's fine. Uh, if you look up there, you'll notice it says 1.2 megabytes. See that up there? 137. That's what the M stands for, megabytes. That's still just in Photoshop. When I say there's a JPEG, it could go way down even further, down to about 200 kilobytes. So you know this difference between bytes? We have bits. We have bits. Then you have bytes. Then you have megabytes, or kilobytes, I'm sorry. Kilobytes. And then you have megabytes. And then you have what? Gigabytes? Terabytes, so a thousand bytes, a thousand, ten thousand bytes, right? A megabyte, maybe, something like that. So here we go. I'm going to hit OK. Now it looks small, but again, remember the zoom factor is here. We looked at that last class. Remember the zoom factor. So if I hit Command Plus till it gets to 100, that's what size would be on our website. It's still kind of big, but um, we'll 
we're going to have to learn the balance between the file size and uh, yours probably looks better because my screen is bigger because of the projector, right? We talked about that last class. So let's actually save it as a JPEG. Photos are best as JPEG. Photos are going to be smallest as JPEG. That PNG format, remember the PNG I was talking about before, is actually a larger file. It's not as good at compressing. When we say the word JPEG, it's a compressed format. So to compress this, we go under File, Save As, and then let's choose down here where it says Format to JPEG. JPEG. And then we can give it a name. This is uh, Skater. Skater? How about that? SK. A, is there a C in skater, or is it skater? Okay. Okay, so we've got skater here. So once you hit OK, man, make sure it's JPEG here. JPEG stands for Joint Picture Expert Group. That's the acronym for JPEG. So if we hit save here, you'll see you get this slider right here. See this slider? This is a slider. We call this in, in computer terms a slider here. And you'll notice it says the largest format is 386.6K, or kilobytes. We want it to be even smarter than that. We can go down, 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 down. With a picture this ugly and bad, we could probably get, get away with 7. So we go down all the way to 7. You'll see it's 91 kilobytes. That's small, not perfect, but it's small. Now let's talk about this option. I tend to not use these things here. So let's go back in time. Back in, back in the day when we had a dial-up connection, so you would dial up through your phone to the internet, and the internet was slow, very, 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 very slow. We used to do something called progressive here. You see this term progressive, where as the picture was being downloaded, you could start seeing it. It would be kind of blurry, and it would clear, clear, clear as it downloads. I don't know if you guys remember those days, but those were the days. That was what progressive was, and the, the different scans was how many levels of downloading. I tend not to use that anymore, but that's what this option is here. So you can avoid that right now. I might go down to 7 and hit OK, and this would be ready for my website. Okay, so hopefully you, you, you got a little bit of color correcting. Remember, we resized it. Remember, image, image size. So you should practice all those. Let's do another one. So I'm going to close this and not save. We already saved it, right? So when it, it keeps asking you this because it wants to save this original one that you made. See the IMG02. And I already saved it as a copy, right? I can say don't save to this. So don't get confused by that because it's going to say that to you a lot. What? Yes? I didn't get the option of um, changing the size of the photo. You didn't ask you for the slider? No. Oh, you got a newer version? Yeah. Oh, you got to hit save. Okay, that's after you hit the button that's come up. So it was seven? Hmm? It was seven? Seven, yeah, something like that, the middle one. Okay, let's do the next one, which is going to be the lighthouse. So if you want, you can either go file open, or again, I'm going to hide Photoshop. Do you see this option that says Photoshop here at the very top up here? If you want to hide the program, not close it, just hide it. If you click on the word Photoshop up here, you can go down to where it says hide Photoshop. What it will do is allow you to go to operating system and choose your picture. So I'm going to go again right here where it says Photoshop up here in the corner. Go to where it says hide Photoshop. And I'm going to go to the one that's the 2214, the one that has a lighthouse in it. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to right click on it and I say open with Photoshop. Again, I went to the operating system and I opened it. If you want, you can also just go file open. You can just go under file open and then go to your folder and try and find it right here, 2214, and then open it that way. Again, this is our famous lighthouse over there at the San Mateo Coast, right? That's the name of it. Pigeon lighthouse, right? But of course, look at the, the lighthouse. It's a little tilted, right? It's a little tilted. Okay, so we're going to straighten it up, crop it a little bit, and save it. Maybe color, color correct it a little bit. So I learned this, like I said, about 22 years ago. I learned how to straighten a photo with this technique, and I still use it today. Same technique. Still use it today. And it's using the measuring tool the measuring tool 
Where's the measuring tool? Well, it's the third one down on the toolbar. If you count down again, the, not, the fir not the first row, second row. I'm going to count down one, two, three. Now that looks like an eyedropper, which it is an eyedropper. But if I hold my left mouse down over top of that, you'll see there's more tools underneath there. And the one I'm going to use, again, it's the third down. Hold your, hold your left mouse down over top of this tool and go to where it says ruler tool. Ruler tool. Okay. Did you find it? Somebody had it in a different mode. Okay, if you have any problems, sometimes people set the Photoshop to word settings, and you want to go to the phone, right? Let's go back to when the person installed Photoshop on the computer, right? So. If you want to go back to default, if you're missing something and you can't find it or something, it's you can reset all the tools back to default by going underneath Window, Workspace, and there is a, yeah, see, look, Sue, the other teacher, has her own settings there. You see that? So if you go to Essentials right here, right here, and say Reset Essentials right here, that's like the default. So again, it's underneath Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials is what I set it first to because she couldn't find the ruler tool, and it, it showed up. Somebody had different settings. Okay. Again, let's use the ruler tool. Here's how it works. You just draw a line. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna zoom in. Command plus. Remember, space bar for the hand, space bar for the hand, space bar for the hand. Okay, you can see it. You could even try and use the pole as well over here, the flag pole if you want. But I'm gonna actually draw a line. Here's how you do it. You use the left mouse. I'm gonna draw a line kind of straight down the middle of the lighthouse. Kind of on the angle of where you think it should be. Do you see how it's kind of you can see the line? If you want to start over, you can you can just draw another line and it'll start over. Draw another line. So what I'm doing is you just click again and draw a line. I'm trying to draw kind of a line that would be down the middle of of the of the lighthouse there kind of like that do you see that i'm trying to you would draw it's the line is on an angle don't go along the edge here because that's not straight i'm going right down the middle i just drew a line kind of down the middle and just do it again if it doesn't look right you can do it a couple times or here Maybe just draw the line along this pole right here. You could do that as well. You're trying to draw a line of where it would be straight. So if I just draw along the pole here, that's about the angle that it's on. Did you see that? Drawing a line. Okay. Next is just to rotate. How do I rotate this image? I'm going to go underneath image image rotation and use the option for arbitrary 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 and what it'll do is if you again it's under image image rotation arbitrary you'll notice it calculates the angle of that line and puts it in there automatically for you and if you hit OK you'll see it'll straighten it out and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit you can see it straightens the photo out let me try again. I'll show you. Escape. That doesn't work. Go under Edit, Undo, Rotate. How about that? <laughs> edit, Undo. Again, I'm using the ruler tool. I draw a line on kind of on the angle you think it should be. That should be straight like that. You're drawing a line. That should be straight. Then go under Image, Image Rotation. 
arbitrary. It calculates your angle and then hit OK and then it will then rotate it to that specific angle. Now of course we have white around the edges and the reason why is because it rotated the images in space. So then we could we could then crop it. Do you remember using the crop tool? And I'm going to close my layers here and then you can use the crop tool and get rid of the white that's around the edges. And then move tool, always whenever you're done with the crop tool, move tool and say crop. And does that look straighter now? Does it look straighter? How about you guys in the back row? Did you get it straight? Again, I use this pretty much on every photo. I never take anything perfectly straight. It's hard to take something that's perfectly straight. So I use this all the time, pretty much every day. And then, of course, if we're going to put this on a website or in my app, uh, when I do apps, I tend to use PNG more than JPEG. PNG, the app software, the, the software to build an app, PNG works, it seems to be a lot more compatible and less problems. The problem with JPEG sometimes is the compression scheme that uses messes up an app. So I tend to use PNG for apps and JPEGs for websites. Then if you want, you can fix this photo. Do you remember some of the fixing things that we did? Levels, remember levels? We can brighten this up. Look at that. Brighten that up, maybe. Look at that. The ground's a lot better. Maybe bring the blacks in. I tend to use a lot of black. See, before and after. Look at that. Before, after, before, after. So, levels is good. And so on. So, maybe levels. That was under, again, member adjustment levels. And then curves, if you want. Another one, you got hue and saturation. And... This basically tells you the color balance is hue, saturation is the amount of color, and lightness is basically brightness. If you use the hue and saturation, sometimes I do this, I get rid of color to give it less color by using turning down the saturation. So you almost get a black and white photo like that. See that? Just by getting rid of the color. Here's more color, less color. You want more green in there on the landscape, you could go more saturation. You can adjust the hue as well to give you different colors. So these are very popular tools. This really made, you can see before and after. So if you want more color in there, it's under hue and saturation. Add some more saturation and you get more color. Saturation is color. Amount of color. So it should be fun. Go and learn some of these tools. Just play around in Photoshop and see what these tools do. I could spend hours looking at the tools and trying them. That's how I learned was just trying them. See that right there. Okay, anybody ready to save this one? Move on. Okay. Is it beautiful? Can you make it beautiful? There you go. This is a very popular way of adjusting the calibers. I've used the saturation a lot. It doesn't look very good on the big guy sometimes. Oh, my screen looks better. You guys probably have a better computer screen. This is a very nice one. Can you, can you see a little bit of a 13 incher? Yes. Oh, that's very nice. Just bought my son one of those. Yes. Okay, save. We go under file, save as. Again, you got your save as. Uh, we, I would use a JPEG or, like I said, if you're going to put it onto an app, I would use PNG. PNG is just another format underneath the format in Photoshop, and you'll see it right there, PNG. And there's a whole bunch of different formats in there. Remember I talked about the Targa? I, I was using something called Targa back in the early days before Photoshop. It's still there. It's a format here. It says Targa. 
Where does the charger come from? It came from the specific hardware that was inside the computer. It was specific to that hardware. You see, PNG Pixar has its own format. Uh, and then there's different JPEGs. Uh, let's not do the JPEG 2000 right now or the stereo one. Don't worry about those. Uh, this PNG, JPEG, and uh, GIF are probably the ones we would use. So if I use PNG right there, and let's give this a name of Lighthouse, and then hit OK, you'll see it also has kind of a compression format, large file size, fast saving. This is the interlacing. I don't do that. The interlacing is the blurry, clear, clear, clear technique that you saw in the, in the JPEG, that blurry, clear, clear. I don't use interlacing. I might say medium size. That is fine. And then say, hey, OK. Again, this would be pretty big on a website. We didn't use the image image size to make it smaller, did we? No. And it's it's having problems saving. You'll see it went to 78% and it stopped saving. <laughs> I don't know why. But, yeah. I don't know why it stopped saving at 78%. So, still trying to save. I guess I should have J JPEG. I don't know. Okay. Once it was done saving, I closed it. Okay, almost done for the day. I know we got about 15 minutes. Okay, let's get rid of the white. Let's get rid of the background. So let's open up the piece of pottery that we have. There is a piece of pottery in there. That's the IMG 2108. This one right here. If we open that up, you'll see we have a wonderful piece of pottery shot on a on a white background a little teapot this was probably one of my first teapots I ever made it's not very good but it's okay we want to put this on a pure white background and so probably the, there's a whole bunch of techniques to go about doing this whole bunch of them um, I don't know, Jean has her specific ways. I'm sure Sue has her specific ways. And I'm talking, there's the art teachers. Everybody has their own different ways. I personally like to use specifically the pen tool because I'm pretty good at the pen tool and it, it, work, it does what I want. And But I'm not going to go over that right now because it's complicated. But if you take the Illustrator class, you'll learn the pen tool. And there is a pen tool here inside of Photoshop as well. And that, don't do this, I'm just pointing it out. That's this one right here. I use the pen tool specifically. And let me demonstrate this real quick for you because I'm pretty quick at it. Just how I might do this. But then we'll use another, we'll use some of these tools up here, probably. But here's the pen tool. I use this because it's going to give me nice, clear, crisp edges. And so what I would do is I would go all the way around the edge of my, my object with the pen tool here. And... I'm usually just going around stud finders here with this. And I go around, go around, all the way around with the pen tool. Pen tool. Okay, I'm going to go real quick here. All the way around, all the way around. So that's pretty sloppy. Ooh, I, hit, I made a mistake there. Whatever. All the way around, all the way around. That's kind of sloppy there, too. Uh-oh. All the way around. All the way around. Okay, whatever. And go all the way around. Let me fix that one. I'm going to move this one back here. There we go. Or just delete that one. Oh, don't do that. Don't don't delete that one. So, I use this tool called the pen tool and you, this is the tool primarily we use in Illustrator to draw with. And, and then I, it makes something called paths, paths right here. And then I can use it to select the object. And then I could use another tool to get the inside out. Whatever, I'm doing this real quick. And then, so I can quickly select using the pen tool. And that's going to be much more precise than using some other tools. So... That was the pen tool. The one I'm primarily going to use, though, is not that one. I'm going to use the lasso 
um, specifically the magnetic lasso. So if I zoom in a little bit, I'm going to make it a little bigger. Remember the space bar for the hand, space bar for the hand. The one I'm going to use mostly for this is the one that I get you get used to using. And if you go over here to the um, this option, the second one down, see the second one down, you should have some tools under there. You have a lasso tool, you have a polygon lasso, then you have the magnetic lasso. I'm going to use the magnetic lasso. And how you use it is just by going along the edge of your object. So I'm going to use the magnetic lasso and I'm going to go along the edge. And as I draw along the edge, you'll see it starts putting the line down along the edge. And you go around. And that, that didn't do very good there. Go around the edge. Go around the edge. Go around the edge. A little sloppy there. Going along the edge. And you go all the way back to the beginning. And it selects it like that. Now it's a little rough. <coughs> but you can adjust it if you want. If you want to like fix your selection, you can use the regular lasso. And I want to add to my selection. So I'm going to use the regular lasso and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to add to this one. So you'll see how I, I kind of put there. If you want to remove from the lasso, you use the option key. See how the cursor turns into a minus? You see that? It's a my option is minus, shift is plus. And so how this these tools work is you kind of just draw with the left mouse. You see that? And of course, I missed some of the handle here, so I'm going to hold down the. Sh I'm using the regular lasso, not the magnetic one, and I'm going to go around the top up here. See that, and then maybe add this to make it better there, or maybe remove some of this, and then for the inside here. I'm going to hold down the option key and go along the edge of this one. Again, I'm just using the magnetic, or no, the regular lasso here. And I know you're not probably very good at drawing with the mouse yet. I know you're difficult. But I use a combination of magnetic lasso and start over. Go underneath. If you want to start over from the very scratch, go under File, Revert, Revert, and back to normal. It's going to take you a while. Let me finish my demo here. 
and then uh, I will come and help you. So the last thing you have here is notice how I selected the teapot. I don't want the teapot. I'm going to inverse my selection to, to select the opposite. So to select the opposite, I go underneath select inverse. Do you see that right there? It's under select. There's a whole select pull down menu inverse. That selects the opposite and then I hit delete on the keyboard and it says what do you want to fill the background with and I'm going to say white. And I hit OK. There you go. White background. Again, how did I do that? I will do it one more time. So again, I flipped my selection by using inverse under select inverse. And then since it's a background layer back there, if I hit the delete key on the keyboard, it's going to say, hey, you want to fill it with white? I say, yes, I want to fill it with white. Boom, and it makes it white back there. If that doesn't work either, you don't like doing that, um, you can also go and say fill by going under file, edit, fill, and then fill with white as well. You see white there, boom, and it has a white background. So again, th there's different ways. And when you're done and you don't want to have marching ants anymore, you use command D on the keyboard and there's no more marching ants. Now we can put this on Amazon and somebody might buy it, right? Or Etsy. Anybody use Etsy? You see Etsy before, right? Etsy is a place where craft people sell their crafts. I don't know. I, I put stuff on Etsy. Nobody buys it. Yeah. And then uh, the last one was to change the color of the hair, right? Do you remember that one? There was a PNG in there. Let's try that. Let me do that real quick. There's a portrait PNG in there. I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. Now, probably the easiest technique to do to change the color is just to select what you want using the famous magic wand tool. That's this one right here. It's called the famous magic wand. Famous because it's easy to use. The problem is that edges aren't as smooth. The path, the pen tool is what I use to make everything nice and smooth along the edges. So if I use, if I open up the portrait and I want to make this yellow, this uh, ribbon around her hair, I can use this one right here. It's the, it's the second one on the left side down. Not the, not the quick selection, the magic wand. I guess you could use that one. I don't know. I use magic wand. And then I click on the red area. And if it doesn't select everything, you can increase the tolerance right here to a higher number. Because if it's low tolerance, let's say 10, and then I click in there, notice how it doesn't select everything, right? So if you take, again, you're using the magic wand. If I increase the tolerance to 32, I think it was on, and then I click in here, you'll notice it selects everything. So depending upon the tolerance is how much it's going to select. Then to fill that with yellow, you can do that under the edit fill, just like I just did before with the white background for the thing. You go under edit fill, and in the fill option, you can change the option here where it says content. You can say color, and when you choose color here, for the content, it'll come up with the color picker. We talked about this last class, remember? How many millions of colors are in this box? 16 million, right? So you got 16 million. So how, this, how do you use this box? You can use the slider, which is the hue here. And then we go up, and I can choose my nice yellow right here by clicking inside here. And then say, OK, and boom. Uh-oh, there's a little bit on the end I missed. Do you see that? Whoosh. Look at that. Edit, fill, color. There it goes. So again, I'll do that one more time. I'm going to select by using the magic wand tool. I select my area that I want by clicking in the color. Notice how it selects everything in there. Then I go underneath edit, fill, F-I-L-L, -L, edit, fill. And then to choose a color where it says content right here, see where it says content? choose color and it'll come up with a color and you can change the value that you want there and I'm gonna give it a nice uh, red, oh no it was red, right? How about we make it orange? Again choose the hue here and then the actual color option here and then say OK and you have orange there. Command D deselects the, the thing so you can save that as well.